sold their house, new people move in and uh, demolish the house, build a three-story or two-story house, which now looks right down in the neighbor's swimming pool or the or part of their property. And um, so what do you do? You, you need a screen today, now. Uh, what will plant a row of redwood trees? I, I wonder if those people have ever seen a bunch of redwood. They're a hundred feet tall and massive. It's like a green wall. Uh, that is a dumb tree plant as a screen because when they're cute little things this big around, you can afford the water. What happens if they need that same amount of water and they're this big around? And you've got, say, 10 of them? Uh, and if you don't water them, they begin to get drought stressed and they become susceptible to a disease called Bacteriosphaeria, which kills them. So um, this is simply a matter of planting the right place, the right plant in the right place. Redwoods are not the right screen to use in the normal uh, 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 landscape. Yes, what would be the right trees? What would be the proper trees? Well, as a general rule, you need about 30 feet of height to provide the screen that that two-story mm -hmm. house uh, uh, demands. And, um, but you don't want something that's going to get to 20 or 30 feet in five years and then 100 feet in 10 or 15 or 20 mm -hmm. years. Um, <clears throat> they're a pinisporum, tenuifolium, uh, GERD's uh, choice. G-E-R-D apostrophe S, um, gets to about 20 feet very quickly. Uh, if you, let's see, um, uh, um, Podocarpus brasilior can be kept at 30 feet very easily. Uh, so it depends on how massive a plant you want, but if you want something that's narrow and upright, there are plenty of choices. Um, I could send you a, if you, need a list of those things. I produced a, um, a publication I can send you if you want to send, it, send me a question. Yes, sir. And if it was a native, if you were I'm sorry, my hearing is awful. If you were looking for a native tree, what would you do? A native tree? Um, <clears throat> one of the questions you asked me about was uh, small native trees. I can't think of any. Um, you certainly don't want to plant a bay. They're very slow. And once they finally get started, they become huge and uh, they have several insect problems. Um, big leaf maple will easily get to 50 or 60 feet. Um, uh, Acer Nagundo California Company, California box elder, uh, is very fast growing and gets to about 40 feet, but it's very brittle and has a lot of insect problems. Um, if you go through the list, I think you'll find there just aren't very many really good answers. Um, there are native oaks, but most of them uh, become much larger than that. Yes, sir. Yep. My enthusiasm for uh, Pacific wax myrtle, I don't know if that qualifies, or is that, that um, might be one, I'm not uh, sure. Pacific uh, wax myrtle, Myrica californica, is a great, um, uh, it is a great shrub if you're, if you're within ocean influence. If you are driving through California uh, in any of the north-south roads and start heading west on one of the side roads, you begin to run into California wax myrtle when you can begin to hear the ocean. And if, you know, and that's one of the points I was going to make. If you want to keep any plant, including California natives, happy, try to see them in the wild. And if, if you can provide the environmental conditions that they have in the wild, you can probably grow them fine. But if you Look at the soil in most of these those areas. They're um, <clears throat> in a sandy loam, or as they get closer to the ocean, really sand, very well drained, in other words, and with a ocean influence. We we used Myrica californica at, um, in Oakland 
uh, Alameda um, in some of the new developments there where they're and, and the soil's terrible. It was a dumb thing to do. Um, they, none of them were left. That wasn't because of the, the weather patterns, it was because of the soil, I'm certain. But the point remains. Um, if, if you can't provide most of the environmental conditions that plant shows you at once, you probably shouldn't use it. Uh, if you put Myrica californica far enough inland, as in um, uh, where um, um, Nancy, don't remember her last name, used them um, <coughs> above uh, Woodside, most of them are gone. And the reason is it's too far from the ocean, the humidity is not high enough, the, uh, the summer air is too dry. The, uh, I, I get you get the point. Thank <laughs> you. Um, well, uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> well, I apologize. A lot of this is most of this has been negative, and I, but my point is that if if you try to make a native plant do what it's not designed to do, you're probably not going to have long-term success. You may have short-term success. Look at Monterey Pines, the only place that grows in this little five-mile-wide, 25-mile strip right on the coast where uh, they, there's no dirt. It's all sand or rock, so they're perfect drainage. The humidity is always high. The temperatures are never very low or very high. It's a very moderate, a neat place to live. That's the reason real estate is so high there. Um, uh, you bring that into inland California, and when it's young, they'll grow three feet a year, and they make a wonderful tree for about 15 years. And then, pine bark beetle. Two native beetles, their job is to kill weakened pine trees. So they do what they're designed to do. They kill Monterey pine trees that are inland. Uh, in other words, People plant Monterey pine trees, they, or they did in the 50s and 60s. Fortunately, you can hardly buy them now, but um, they just have no place in the inland environment because as they mature, they become city ducks or disease problems. Um, but that's not just true of Monterey pines, it's true of any um, California native plant. And if you think about it, if you want to extend your horizon, it's true of any plant from any Mediterranean climate, whether Chile, uh, parts of uh, Australia, uh, parts of um, Africa. Um, uh, if they, those are plants that are designed for rain or water when it's cool and drought when it's hot. And if you try to diverge from that, you're going to run into trouble. For instance, if you plan on planting uh, 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 ceanothus and manzanitas, the favorites and the best of our native um, shrub species, remember uh, ceanothus is the Romnaceae family. Romnaceae family are sitting ducks for water bowl disease. They just, they're like an invitation. And uh, manzanitas are in the Ericaceae family, the heath family, including uh, uh, heathers, rhododendrons, azaleas, um, a lot of the wonderful plants we all love. But that whole plant plant family is very susceptible to water bowl disease, Phytophthora cinnamoma. So if if you plan on planting ceanothus and manzanitas in your garden and you plan on sprinklers, uh, you're going to get a chance to plant the garden over again. <laughs> um, uh, so it's, it, it's really pretty simple. I've wasted a lot of t your time, a lot of words, on trying to give plants the environment that they have in the wild, and plants will work. It's really simple. And, um, it is, and I'm not saying you can't develop a diverge from that some, but 
when you do, you need to understand that what you're doing, that you're pushing your luck. Yes, sir. On the sudden death of the oak, uh, sudden death of the, uh, the oak, the oak. Yes. Um, uh, sudden death in coast live oak and well, black oak and uh, canyon live oak. Um, it's a devastating problem. Has nothing to do with anything human beings have done. Uh, I mean, are are doing. It's nothing. If you live in a <clears throat> a closed can a closed canopy environment where when you walk outside you can see very little sun through the canopy, and you have uh, bay trees growing amongst your oaks. Um, if you're well, most of this part of California, uh, you are a candidate for SOD. Um, if you have one oak in your front yard and there are no other trees around, forget it. It's a non-problem. If you don't have that set of conditions, SOD is not going to be there. And the, um, the, all the literature about rhododendrons and, and um, toyons and, and all those being um, hope of host. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, vectors. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, for SOD uh, are really not the major problem. If, if I, I have to look at SOD probably every week someplace for somebody and in the first place recognize that um, hypoxylin, uh, the, um, the white rot disease that produces the black look like half a golf ball um, on the trunks. That's been around for a long time, long before there was sudden oak death. And, yes, uh, and hypoxylin, uh, well, I was just looking at some in, in Los Alamos Hills last week that big oaks killed by hypoxylin has nothing to do with SOD. There's no SOD in that area. I'm sorry. I was, up, I was up in Queens at Phoenix Ranch, and I'm not, I'm not an expert in this, but, but it looked to me like the bone cavity was there. You had the uh, bay, which was the dominant species in the big creek, right? And there's an adjacent sort of hierarchy on both sides of the worm, the worm sizes. The oaks are in trouble. And it looks like a bunch of trouble. Well, if you have a coast live oak, and recognize, of course, that valley oak and interior live oak are not susceptible, so don't let somebody scare you if you have a valley oak that looks sick. That has nothing to do with SOB. But if you have coast live oaks with bays growing up through them, and it's a fairly close canopy, um, if you're in this county, you could certainly have SOB. But the symptoms, oh, oh first recognize that um, SOD spores can't be passed between oak and oak. They can only be passed from a vector to an oak tree. So, and if you uh, look at the symptoms of, uh, of SOD spore, uh, spores on bay trees, the speckled look and the, the dead patches on the leaves, you'll see most of them are in the bottom of seven or eight or ten feet of, of babies. So, if you get rid of the small bays, or you prune up the big bays to be, say, 10 feet above grade, um, uh, you'll probably get rid of most of the likelihood of having an SOD attack on your oak trees. Um, but it's almost exclusively the spores on the bay trees transferred to the adjacent oaks. So in other words, if you've got a closed canopy and no bay trees around, you're probably still not going to have SOD. You've got to have something to, to, uh, to be a vector for those forms. What's further reasons to affect by this? I hope you don't mind dwelling on this. It's just uh, very current charge. The regions, this is Marin County, which is here, uh, to reach the areas that are having problems with this. I'm, uh, I'm afraid you're getting into uh, an area of mystery as far as I'm concerned. Um, why do we have it here and through Santa Cruz County and in Marin County, but 